Proprio Parametric 4.0, Lesson 19. Lesson 19 is a complete lecture video lesson. It has no step-by-step -step counterpart in the book. So we're going to start off by going and we're seeing where the parts are going to be, and we're going to go into the CAD Resources website. And you can click on downloads or on the very first page. There should also be a, I'm not seeing it right here. I think this has not been refreshed. But let's go to the downloads anyway. And this opens up in another window. And we're going to go over to where it says gear assembly. Click on that. And we will open that. And we'll close the other items here and we have our gear parts and you can just put that on your desktop or be better to put it in a folder on your system so I'm going to shut this and go back over and I'm going to set my working directory <coughs> to that gear parts okay. now the first thing I want to do is I want to explore what's there so I've got five items. <clears throat> and the bracket, I'm going to open up the bracket and just inspect it. And I'm going to click over here, and I want to prepare and model, model properties, and I want to see what's going on with it. So I notice I have units custom. I want to change that. It's either going to be inches or millimeter. I know for a fact it is millimeters, so I'm going to set it at that and use interpret, not convert. And then I'm going to shut that one. You can change the color if you wish. Next one, I'm just going to open one more, the bushing. And again, I want to see what has been done to this as a setup. And again, it says custom units. And I want to make sure all these are set as millimeters. So I'm going to work my way through each one of the components to make sure they're what I want, which is the millimeters. Take a little bit of time, obviously, to set this up. And once you're done, you'll have all your components ready to go. And you can, again, change the colors if they're not to your liking. You'll notice that the only thing that's been changed is added here, rather, is the units. Um, no materials were set for anything. They're not required for the project, but you can do that if you want to. We have our ring. And in each one of these, we want to set them. I didn't save anything. When I do the assembly, I will I could save it there. And it will save each one of the parts and the information that we've changed here for the setup. So that should do it. And I'm going to close that. <clears throat> now, it's going to be a new assembly. I'll use my default template. Make sure you've turned on all of the items that you want to see. Make sure you definitely go and turn on your model tree items. This is very important. And if you want to, I think it'd be a good idea to go in your configuration editor and open up and import your file that we've been using for the textbook. Now, mine's taking a little bit longer because it's accessing another drive. And unfortunately, it does turn off the, the datum tags. 
All right, so <clears throat> we're ready to go with it. Now, one of the things I want to do is see what's available on my pop-up. And I'm going to go to Model, and I'm going to click on Assemble. And we are going to assemble the bracket part. That'll be our first one. And we're going to put that at the default position, like so. It's going to rearrange it a little bit here. Now, the next thing here, on this menu, I'm going to put on Customize. And I'm going to go down and select Assemble. And I'm going to take Assemble, and I'm going to move it over here, like so. Now, for my next component, I can just click here, right mouse button, Assemble. And this one is going to be the bushing. And I'm going to select the round here. Now, at this point, if I wanted to, I could shut off everything, make it a little easier to see. So I'll click here. I'll click inside here. And then I'm going to select here and here. So these are two sets of constraints. Now this is backwards, so I'm going to flip the constraint. See what happened here. I'm going to flip it, see what happens. There we go. And I'm going to uncheck uh, assumptions and add one more constraint. And I'm going to select the top flat area move my cursor and hit right mouse button and select that flat in the bracket. And in this case here, I am going to just select parallel, nothing else. Middle mouse button. Next one is the ring for the back. So again, right mouse button, assemble, ring. And I'm going to select the round internal feature and I'm going to go up here and select inside very carefully and then I'm going to select here and here and I'm going to reverse that let's see if I flip it there we go and last I'm going to add one more constraint and I'm going to select this flat here at the end of the ring and select over here. Now, that says normal, and I want to change that into an angle. And that way, if I want to, I can actually rotate this a little bit for the retaining ring. Little mouse button, and it's in. All right, next one will be the shaft. Assemble, shaft, select the round of the shaft and the bushing hole. Select the bushing face here and the end of the shaft. And this is going to be changed to distance. Like so. And I could have I could have moved that. So if I click here and go and go back in, I could actually rotate this. And it's got an angle available. And what I'd like to do is just look at the dimensions. And I want to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make it 2. And regenerate. All right, right mouse button, <clears throat> let's assemble. And this time, let's put the crank on there. I'm going to select inside here and the shaft. And I'm going to select this hole and the other hole here. And select coincident. And I'm going to flip that like so. I'm going to add one more new constraint. And I'm going to select here. 
end here and I'm going to make that parallel. Okay, now the gear will be assembled on the other side. Hole in the middle, shaft, small hole here, small hole there, and this again will be coincident, and it's facing the right way. We could add another constraint, and the reason for doing this is to make sure it's always facing the proper direction. It doesn't accidentally flip around during another operation like explode. And this one is just parallel again. Like so. All right, so now let's go and look at what we have over here. The shaft is not completely constrained. You'll see the little mark out in front of it. So I'm going to go and do it again, see what's missing. You've got the coincident hole. You've got a distance, and I want to allow assumptions. Now I'm going to put the new constraint in there. And in this case here, I'm going to turn my datum planes back on, and I'm going to select the component reference, which is this datum, and the assembly one here, which is this datum. And again, I can turn this to whatever degree I want, and I can change it in the model or any other place. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. All right. Now, one other thing. Let's see what happens if we uh, select the... Um, first of all, let's look at the model tree. You can see the little boxes out in front for constraints or packaging uh, are available. And you can see they're all without the little box, which means they're constrained, fully constrained. So let's look at the crank and placement and we have the coincident and the second one we have the hole to hole and if I disable that one just for a second and let's try going over here like so and turn it back on little mouse button. Okay, so I rotated it, lined up the hole, because it has two options. Which side does it want to be aligned with? By doing this, it flipped it over. It looks a little bit better. All right, so we've got the components in there. I'm going to turn off the uh, datum features again. Zoom in. And I want to see what's going on here. There's a big difference between these diameters. So something's obviously wrong. So what I want to do, first of all, I want to go over and I want to go to prepare again and model properties. And my assembly is in the wrong units. I was supposed to pick millimeters before I did it. And I notice it says include submodels, but they should be set to the millimeter anyway. So, all right, close, close. Now, you're kind of wondering what happened. If I double click on here, I will see that my offset is only two millimeters. Let's try 50. And I'm going to regenerate. So now it pops it back out. Now, going back to the shaft, let's go to analysis and measure and diameter. And we see that we have 17 for this one, 19.12 for this one, 19 for this one, 
and 19 for this one. So obviously the shaft is wrong. You can even change the bearing too. I mean the bushing. So I'm going to activate this, double click on it, double click on the 17, change it to 19, and regenerate, and then activate the assembly again. Now I can do one more thing. I can go and take a look at the interference in preview and we will see that we only have interference one spot and that's with the retaining ring and that's okay because it was actually designed like this to be a little bit smaller so that it clips on now you can add a couple pins if you want set screws whatever you want to put in there but Let's take a look first of all at the um, explode. I'm going to go to view and I'm going to click on explode view. I thought that was interesting what it just did. It rotated it around. Didn't really move anything. So edit position and I'm going to move these items out just one at a time. rearrange it a little bit. I'm not going to get too fancy with it. Let me get an explode view. Like so. Now I could save this at this point. And I'm going to shut off my exploded view. So. so that's the default explode view, by the way. And we've just reset it to that. All right, this concludes lecture for lesson 19, video lecture and video lesson.